welcome. Uh, this is uh, the first, you're, you're my first guest. This is a, this is a weird project that we've had uh, in, the, in the wings for a while now, um, specifically about conversations with people that uh, I've met along the way or that have found me in a way is what this uh, conversation is going to be. Uh, these series of conversations are going to be kind of about, uh, you know, Conejo, thank you for coming on. I know, I know it's a, and it was a trip for you getting here and, uh, and sitting down with me. This is not the first time we meet, you know, we, we talked a bit before, you know, so before we go into that, uh, like, who are you? Like, can you, can you talk to, to us about like who you are? Who am I now? Yeah, who, who yeah. Who, who are, we're going to talk about where you, who you were, you know, like, but who are you now? Right now, I just, I feel like I'm a, I'm a father, you know, I'm a family man and that's who I am now. Right now, as you said that I, I, um, I remember running, running away from my house as a kid. Yeah. Like grabbing unos trapos and just throw them in a backpack and running away and, and now that I think about it, I've always been running. Yeah. I've always been running and 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 it got to a point in my life where I ran for reals. <laughs> you know, know yes there. Like when I when I ask you like who you are now, did it just dawn on you that you may not be running as much as you did before? Was yeah. that was that what gave you a pause? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like um I like who I am now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it has taken a lot for you to get who, where you are right now. So, oh, yeah, man. Um, when uh, when you talk about being a father, you know, uh, man, you know, like I'm one too. So I, I, I can I can feel you when you say like oh, I'm a father now. That's a that's a prime directive for for us as a motivator. You know, um, what? Uh, it's a game changer. When you oh. have, when you have a child, it's a, it's a game changer. Like, um, and you know, it's, well, my first daughter, um, I had her as a fugitive. That you you were on the run when you when yeah you, when, when she, I had when she came into your life. Yeah, and um, maybe like five six months in, the mother was like, "Here's your baby, I'm out." So I was on the run with that child, you know. So basically, you got all the responsibility on top of the responsibility of keeping yourself safe safe and free. free and um it was a beautiful thing you know because i feel like in my weakest moments i could turn around and look at that child and it was all love and it gave me that warm feeling and it gave me hope i think so, so that, that that's a motivator now that's where you are right now yeah uh, can you talk about uh, i mean your music i mean i think that has been a vehicle that has led you to the here, right? So d d tell us a little bit about your music and, and you know, your, I mean, you have a long career. I mean, I, yeah. I remember just listening to you in the past and like seeing your transformation from yeah. being out there, living the life that you were singing about, not like, you know, I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And then now uh, expressing something different. You now, can you tell us a bit about that? Well, um, you know what? like about I've been doing it for like a month two months now I've been like you know I hooked up with a publishing company and I've been looking at my songs yeah. and like the the titles and everything I was doing I, I never I record so much that I don't it's like I don't listen to Conejo yeah I just do Conejo and then I don't listen to him yeah and is, then, is he, is he it, it, so for you like your rap persona Conejo is it like a, is it basically a mask or a character that you kind of created for yourself? I think I think I did. I think it took a lot to make him. You know, yeah. Conejo's a villain, yeah. super villain. <laughs> and um, and um, I remember from last time when we were talking, we we're talking about ghosts, the fantasmas, and all these things like that, right? Yeah. So I'm doing this publishing, these getting these songs ready to you know, to get them linked up with BMI, and I'm looking at my song titles, and I got songs that are like. Ghost Man, you know, um, the ghost of CON. I have an album called Ghost Town. And I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. Is I'm, it, I'm just like looking at these song titles and I was just like. It's, it's, it's death, basically, uh, like, what, uh, got like, a, like a frame and or like a subject matter that basically has been going on over and over again in a lot of the music you've been creating, basically. It has, it has. And, and, and it's weird because because I want to live, 
yeah. you know, I want to live so bad. I don't want nothing to get in the way of it. But for some reason, the subject matter is always that. So what, what, what got you, what got you started in, in the music and the music? I mean, was it, was it just you, you know, can, can you t like, can, let's, let's start from the beginning. Like where, 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 where are you from? Like, where, where were you born? I was born in Los Angeles. Um, my parents, they were like, they didn't have no money. And um, like my mom was ready to go and my dad ran into these nuns in LA. Yeah. And, and I need help. And they're like, bring her, bring her, bring her by. So they went to this, this hospital. It's like a nun hospital. It's called the Queen of Angels Hospital. Yeah. And that's where they filmed Freddy Cougar. Like the, the <laughs> you know, he's like in the yeah. bottom in the, boiler room or whatever yeah, that's yeah, that yeah. hospital wow so i was born right there and um basically i you know i started um rapping in the 80s as a kid i listened to all all hip-hop yeah whatever was coming out i was listening to when it whether it was from the east coast the west coast the midwest it didn't matter we were just into like the music but then um you know the crack era came yeah that and ate, then that, that ate people it just yeah just got and just started eating people like zombies basically and kind of. then um right away the violence came with it yeah so, so, so i mean um, and meth is a stimulant right so yeah cocaine and meth will make people do shit yeah yeah it was a different drug i remember um there's a there's a tunnel that that goes under the the 10 freeway it's the street is called butlong and i remember <laughs> i was a kid and we would always you know la gente they throw their couches there they're they're old dirty mattresses they throw all these things there you know anything refrigerators and as a kid we would go through there and just want to break things and things like that right and and i remember um there was a bunch of boxes and then we opened these boxes and it was like thousands of crack pipes just there like cla you, you new glass pipes or yeah, just gla used? yeah glass pipes so i'm like yeah. uh, i didn't know what they were yeah. i was just like hey look at this <laughs> break it we start crushing them and breaking them but we're just like now that i think about it i'm like they put those someone put those there yeah <laughs> there was those, those, those were a clavo for yeah. somebody right like, you know it's like it's just strange you know like yes they i mean if somebody you know somebody hit those there so if somebody walked in on you doing that shit maybe you're gonna you were gonna get in some <laughs> shit right back then yep yes they and these were the days where we had like clubhouses on the side of the freeway, you know, and we had magazines like the, you're not the ones you're not supposed to have. And yeah. We just hang out there. And, and then like the gang thing started becoming prevalent because I remember being a kid, I was a skater. I was a stoner. I had long hair, you know, like any kid, that's yeah. how you grew up. And that's how I grew up. Yeah. It wasn't different. I don't remember it being ugly. Yeah. I remember having fun and then that, that, your, your normal was your normal. So you, you didn't, you didn't know anything else. Basically. Yeah. And then I grew up by USC college. So we would go pool hopping. We'd go in these apartments and go swimming and then, you know, go to the next one and next one. And then, but then when the gang thing came in, I was, was rapping, you know, I was just making songs, backyard boogie stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They, so once I, I went that way, it was like, oh, let me write a, a quick little verse about the fellas. He, so you started, you, so you started writing and singing about the people you. Yeah, were, my environment, basically. and 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 it's strange because I remember our, there was this this gang, that we were all right with. These girls would come down, right, and she was like, "Hey, my boyfriend has a record label. Call him," and I was like, "Oh shit!" It was a little card with a little B boy on it, whatever. I called the dude, and um, this dude was from 18th Street. Dang. He was my enemy, you know, but this was some hip hop shit. So he's like, come down, rap for me. I go over there and I rap for this dude. They're recording me on a tape deck. Yes. They, and that started everything, you know? Yeah. And to this day, he's my friend. Yeah, that's, that's a weird, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. And it's that, crazy. Cause his name, they call him Chino, but actually he's Korean and Colombian. But for Mexicans, you know, <laughs> all, Asian, Chino. All, all Asians are Chinos, you know, yeah. for Mexicans too. Uh, when you look back on some of those early songs, are they, are they like memories? Are they like, uh, they're like a snapshot of the environment? Yeah, yeah. Do you, like, would you sing about people that are not here anymore? Yeah, I would. Is, is, is some you, of the ghosts that you talk about. You know what, in, in, in 91, they killed 17 of my friends that year. So I was just, 
I was just making songs. And how, how, old, how old were you in 91? I think in 91, I was like 16. <sighs> I was like 16. Damn. And um, I just, I remember going to a lot of funerals. And these funerals were like a celebration of death. Because, yeah, a couple of people would be crying. Well, there was music. But everybody else was just like laughing, pounding. And then it was like, get back. As soon as it was done. Vámonos. Yeah. Back, we, back to it again. Yeah. And we would just... No, 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 no time for processing. No time for nah, duelo. No time for nah. nada. Yes, the and that's it. It just kept on going, and I feel like, like I would always almost hit rock bottom, but the music would save me every it, time. Was it was it, was it pulling you out of uh, you know basically was it giving you an outlet for some of the shit you had inside you? Yeah, it was, and and plus where we would go to the studio, it was like it it, it was in the loft area downtown. So it was like a little getaway. Like, so yeah, you would escape, you would escape yeah, the line, just do that for a bit, and then come back. And then come back with the new cassettes and give everybody cassettes. You did, know? did it give you an excuse, basically, to kind of start figuring out how to get out of it in a way? Or I, I think like, it, I think it did, but but I was like one foot in, one foot out. I yeah, couldn't, I no, couldn't because you couldn't commit. You couldn't commit the whole thing. No, nah, I couldn't. And, what um, what kept you, what kept you from doing, uh, getting both feet out? what was what was holding you there well you know what it is i think that that just hanging out on the street is like a drug it's addicting and and i think that when i think back in those those days when i'll be hanging out on the corner it's the freest i've ever been i was like an eagle i was free yeah i was on the corner it's it was dangerous but i was free D dangerous freedom is what i want i like to describe mexico as and or, or any place like yeah. that that risky place like that where you have you know I am, you know, I this in this area. I know the normal. I'm part of the normal. I own the normal, and you know, we'll do a party here at the six in the morning. The cops going to show up. That's what's going to happen. You know, this is Mexico. No, <laughs> LA is pretty. You know, Mexica, yeah. <laughs> Mexicanado. No. Yeah. So yeah, I get I get the I get the need and or kind of like the, you know, I had some of that when I was working. You know, I would go out and get go missing for months, and my family wouldn't know shit about me. You know, just working. And the whole aspect of, yeah, but no, vale, verga, yo estoy libre, yo puedo hacer lo que quiera. Like yeah. fucking Peter Pan and Never Neverland yeah. shit, you know? I get that aspect of it. You go from living that life and having the the uh, music kind of paired, you know, you're just no direction. Or do you did you have some sort of direction? Like, where were you going I with mean, that? I think everybody's dream in those days was to get a record deal. Yeah. But then I see that I wasn't getting getting one, so I was just like, almost like depressed about it, and I'll be like, man, fuck that, I'm just go. It's not, it's not, it wasn't happening for you, so you're like getting really frustrated. With yeah, that. and then I just go right back out to the street, and and just act out in the street, and um and it gave me I don't know, it's just the streets always giving me content. Yeah, like I mean, these turbulent areas have always given me content. I mean, I've been good at that. So you, you you go from being really upset of not not getting opportunities in the music scene, you go back to the street and it gives you fucking material, of course, yeah, because yeah. you're fucking living that shit. You're not yeah. just thinking about it. And, and then, then like, it pushes you back to continue on the music. And then my friends like it. You know, my friends over there like, they're over there like smoking primos, you know, like weed with cocaine. And, and they're just like, shh. And hearing my songs. And it, it, I could see how it's like, it's like um it's becoming part of them too yeah it's it's starting to like they, 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 i mean you, you, you did you did you get a moment where you would see them hear your music without you there and you were like yeah ah, yeah yeah i remember that um there was a situation once where we we got invited to this football game where it was all florence versus all watts all the gangs from watts versus all the gangs from florence and um we're there at this park right and um all of a sudden, a car pulls up, boom, bumping, and it's my music, and it, I tripped out on it. I mean, I had cousins from Florence, that's why. Yeah. But it still tripped me out. Like, oh, shit. That's me. That's me fucking thinking that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's fucking weird. And, um, and that's been the story. It's just been like... So you're living this life where you're half in, half out. What happens? Like what? What changed? What detonated you leaving that? I feel that what changed everything was like, like I said, it like the like the, the environment possesses you. 
Yeah. And you get to the point where you're like, you've been there so much that you're like, let me show you how I how I do it, how I learn this. And, and you know, like, people are dying all the time. There's new faces coming in and out, in and out, in and out. And, um, you know, you, you step, you eventually, you're the one that steps up. You, you've been watching people step up, but now you step up. And that's when it goes all bad because you, you just like, like laser focus on the negative. Yeah. And, and there's nothing so that's going to change you. So basically, you started assuming a leadership position somewhere where you were out there and you're like, oh, este cabrón es el que manda. Este cabrón es el que va a hacer. Did you get into a position like that, I, basically? I just felt like um, I, was in a, I was in a position where, where like I would take things into my own hands. Yeah. Like, yeah. watch out. Let me show yeah. you how you do this shit. Yeah. You'll see what, the, the ones I am como, yeah. yeah. Just like someone did to me at one point, you know? Yeah. And then, um, like I said, people are dying, new faces coming in and out. We're playing this game with the law enforcement. So. Now, now what was your interactions with law enforcement there? Like, I mean, imagine, was it, I mean, you know, we're, you know, yo fui un puerco. No vale madre. <laughs> <laughs> what was your what was what was your relationship with the police there like were they harassing you a lot were they just well in, th in those days they were the, the what they call the crash crash units and, crash units and they were like they were just active they would they would mobilize like a gang themselves you know e and just the way their behavior you know like they were they were but, they were dirty les valia verga. Les valia verga. but but like uh i mean did you feel discrimination you know nah. that, all that shit I'm, i guess the thing is kid with mexicans like we're, we're always like like we just we just deal with shit and that's it yeah i didn't feel like yeah i was like fuck them and all that shit fuck the lapd and all that but it was part of the game you know yeah count them out it, so it, it it came with it so it's like no 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 era nada que it was out of the ordinary yeah, you know, they will abuse their authority, but we were doing the same shit too, you know? Yeah. So we're, we're abusing the community. They're abusing their authority, we're abusing from the community. He, I don't know, I just, I, I never took it that personal with them, you know? So, you know, you're there, you're stepping up now. You're, you're, you're not only documenting through your music, uh, but you're also actively um doing things that are you later on yeah. in the document uh what happens what happens that uh makes all that kind of stop for you like there was a was there a pause for that when you had to just fucking leave everything yeah de un día pa otro well not really something happened but then un dia the call came through and it was like i was out yeah. and and i remember um crossing that when it, I didn't cross right away, but I eventually crossed, and I rem it was nighttime, and I remember like coming through and and seeing all the lights so, on the Los Cerros, like the TJ. So basically, can... so basically, you got to call, pelate carnal. Sí. Hermano cayó en la ley, <laughs> esta tu casa, and you just fucking yeah. So you have to f leave everything. You leave, did you leave everything or did everything. you fucking have a, a bolsita y me llevo esto? Yeah, yeah, sí me unas cosas. Yeah. Sí me ¿Qué unas... te llevaste? It's funny, me llevé un, un, un martial arts gi because I was training Kempo, right? That was important to you. Yeah, so, so the... I took it with me. You took that gi with you? And then um, I think I had like a purple belt or a blue belt, I'm not sure. Yeah. Y este, I took it with me. Y, and it's crazy because where I landed in Jalisco, and so you so you you left LA. I left LA. Bailed. Via via car, imagine. Did you fucking drive? Basically? Yeah, yeah. Someone drove me in. Cool. Cross into the uh, cross into Tijuana. Yeah. Fucking Narnia. <laughs> Tijuana. You know the smell is Cali, Tijuana. You just cross. And it's crazy because antes nosotros ven like you know like um let's just say Memorial Day weekend, spring break and all that. Yeah. Again. Okay, we right. would yeah, man, I'm almost deep. Like, we'll come, <laughs> all my homeboys will come like 50 deep. Yeah. And we'll go to, Red, you know, we'll go to Rosarito. It was a, we'll come to party, but like gang fights. Yeah. If, exactly. you, if you didn't come like more than 
30, no, some shit is going to happen to you, you know? Yeah. So we would come deep, but but we would but always this, go home. Yeah, this is different. You're crossing in. You can't go you don't, back. You don't, you don't, you, did you, did you have a concept of when you would probably go back? Man, you know what? Honestly, my friend told me, hey, let's just go over there. I remember he te- he's, we're in LA, we're hiding out in these apartments and he's like, let's go over there. You know, we could, um, we could get paid for being, you know. Bajalar. Yeah. Yeah. We could get paid to, to, so we could get paid to, um, to. The work. Yeah, yeah do, jalar. do what we do anyways. You jalar, know? Jalar. The, 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 Tijuana has a long history of people coming from the U.S. that are involved in activities. Then, you know, oh, we can do that down there, too. So if I can go down yeah. there. And, you know, the flip side, they would work down here and they would hide in the U.S. You know, yeah. like, you know, to early, late to 90s, early 2000s. Esa es la cura, no? Yeah. You know, like Logan people. Yeah. Logan venía pa acá, they would come here and work here. So you cross, no idea when you're coming back. You're just like, it's Mexico now. Vámonos. Yeah. Right. I make it all the way to Jalisco. Jalisco. And, uh, like Jalisco. Like you're talking about early 2000s Jalisco? Yeah. Shh. Yes. They, Bravo. It was, was it a nah, like, did, it, you, did, you, did you? It wasn't that crazy, but I remember que I, I, I was, I see my uncle over there, you know? And I remember we went to go see, um, what's his name? Uh, Elizalde. Yeah, Valentin, Valen, Valentin, Valentin Lizalde. Vete ya. Yeah. Si no encuentras motivo. Yeah. <laughs> I can do a little bit of good, good Valentin, man. We seen a uh, banda lim. We went to go see a couple of bands, right? Yeah. And I got drunk with my uncles, two of my uncles, right? Y me fui todo cowboyed out. Llegó, you know, Sombrero. sombrero y botas y todo. And I was drunk with them, you know, and, and these are my mom's brothers. And uh, my uncle tells me, he's like, eh, hey, acá... Acá es otro pedo. Acá, acá no puede. Acá, acá está lleno de machos. So you got to watch out. All that LA shit is not going to work over here. And so, and, a, and he told me, but it didn't like compute yeah. until like, like 30 days later. Things started happening. You know, things started happening. I just. You started, you started how people get, pre- you know, fucking get got down there basically. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I just, and then I started moving around. Then I was here, then I was there. Like my family, they're all like, like agricultores. There, there, there's no drug dealers in my family. Yeah. So you would, you, so basically, when you, you would, when you came down here, you were kind of like focusing on jumping from family unit to family unit down here. People that you knew, basically. Well, m- my friend that I came with, yeah, his family's yeah. Oh. in the game. Oh, okay. So cool. he was like, "I'm a, don't worry, I'm gonna get something going for us, and um, and we're gonna be all right." Yeah. Y, y de hecho siempre me acuerdo que me decía, hey, he'll tell me, hey, rabbit. And I'm like, what's up? And he's like, this is home. And I'll be like, hell no, nah. I didn't want to accept it. <laughs> yeah. That this was home, you know? Yeah. Y pues eh, allá en LA, every Friday, Saturday, brand new shoes, brand new clothes, every I week looking know. fresh. Y acá I started looking. <laughs> Go to slot me. Yeah, I started looking dusty. <laughs> <laughs> I was just starting to look dusty. Y este, pues esa madre me... It's, it's, it's a, nothing, but it's, 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 it's a change. It's a change. It's definitely a change. It's, and also specifically, I mean, you're you're running. Yeah. You know? Like keep even that I was still that that was fresh, so I was paranoid and and um like uh what, what would you do? Like what would you do to keep yourself from you know being seen? Like switch phones and. Fucking nah. wear a hat and fucking be yeah, all yeah. ninja. Like, how how would you move around? Would you would you would well, you fly? No. You... At first, when I was in Jalisco, I was in one town, right? Yeah. And I was just walking around. Yes, I might have waited más because I had a super swim Monte Carlo in L.A. And over here, I'm fucking walking. Was a pata. Andaba pata. Y este y y el town donde estaba, they had a book about the town. It was weird. And I remember I opened it. Y on one page, they had a Kempo school. Yeah. So I told one of my uncles on my dad's side, I'm like, hey, where's this shit at? Oh, te vas por aquí, por allá. And then I, I went, I showed up with that gi. Yeah. And I was like, hey, no puedo entrenar con ustedes. And they were like, come on in. And they're making me go head up with all with all the biggest dudes. <laughs> they want to see, see where you're at, yeah. basically. Yes, este, and, and I got close with them. You know, I, I ended up like getting real close with them and I just started training. And I remember I would like, on the way there, I'd fucking smoke some weed. <laughs> I'd be fucking high. So, how, so how, like, a, a, a weed head question. Yeah. How was the weed back then compared to the weed in California that you would get? 
Mm, well, weed was just getting like real good in California. Yeah. But but right here in Jalisco, había un morrillo que I would le daba yo un ten dollar bill. Y este güey me traía these big ass nugs. Just chunk. Yeah, in in like a like a market bag, right? Yeah. But it'd be like nice. I guess that's what they call verde limón. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was nice, nice yeah. weed, you know. Y, y pues, so I would always just be smoking. Yeah, garbage like back then here in Tijuana, garbage weed. Yeah, garbage weed, you know. Y, and you know, I just started like um, I started training. Y de hecho, de hecho, I had some cousins, right? Y ellos, when you turn 18, you gotta go to the, you gotta do your service, right? Military service. Yeah, el, el, el servicio militar. Servicio militar. Yeah, you have to do that shit. So I was gonna go into the, to the military. I'm like, man, I could hide in there with them. Yeah. I'll just turn into a military, get, get some training real quick. Because, you know, it's cardio. You yeah. do some cardio, basically. <laughs> cardio and enforce the starvation, basically, yeah. Y, y pues, you know, I was like, I'll do that. But then I, 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 I couldn't, I didn't have all my documents and... It's not as easy as you would think. Yeah, it's not as it's easy. Not the French Foreign Legion. Yeah, y este, and then um, then one day I got a call. It was my 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 boy, and he was like, "Hey, I chamba. I'll tell you when I get over there." And he came, and I was like, "Ah, oh, shit, that's crazy, for real, it's like that." Yeah. Si me sacó de onda, cause you know here I'm I'm on the run for this. Yeah. But I gotta do this, cause the plan was to like do a bunch of this yeah to get enough money to go back to la and pay a lawyer and, and fight my case that, that's i mean it's a plan it's a know? plan you know it's a plan <laughs> it's not the best one man it's a plan but and then everything started changing up you know yeah that's the plan but a little you know there's curveballs coming at you yeah yes este, and then um so you, we, you, we, you, we you, end up in tj again you get a call you're in guadalajara training campo yeah you're Fucking smoking some sweet ass uh, weed from the mountains. Yeah, I'm over you're, here. Like, you're like settling a little bit, you know, yeah. not accepting, but settling. And all yeah. of a sudden, boot, jale, donde, tijuas, vámonos. No, no, no. Nos fuimos a Ciudad Guzmán. Yeah, we went to Ciudad Guzmán. Pero first. De, de Ciudad Guzmán, part of the payment was like, hey, you guys could get one of the mansions right there atrás del hipódromo. Holy shit. So okay. I was like, fuck yeah, let's get the fuck out. I didn't like, I didn't like Guadalajara. Yeah. It was too big for me. Yeah. He. And I didn't, like, mi familia, we would always go to Mexico every year, right? Every year for, like, a month or three weeks. Yeah. But now this was, like, real Guadalajara. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, this, this is not vacation Guadalajara. Yeah. This is, like, here. So when they said you guys want to go to the border, I was like, yeah. To me, TJ was like L.A. It it's was close. the closest thing it's to close. L.A., the, the culture. Everybody knows English. Yes, they, we, we got here. We got here to Atrás del Hipódromo. We get a house. Tony Montana shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, la alberca está negra al agua. Grass is like this big. We start fixing it all up. The, the, the U.S. steals all of our gardeners and pool cleaners. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's why. You know, that's why it's fucking crazy dirty. Yup. Y este... Y ya. And then... Me acuerdo que... How many of you... Like, how many of you were living in this fucking house? Like, it, how... It was like two of us. And then we had all these, like, visitors coming all the time, right? It's like a big, it's like a long ass sleepover, basically. Yeah, yes, the pizzas, like pizza boxes and shit like that yeah, all in the kitchen. Yeah, all, all that shit. <laughs> y luego este, so then um, what happened was that house was hot. Estaba caliente. It was burned. So, so, the, the, guy that, that, so the, the guy that set you up there was like, it set you up in this fucking burned safe he house. He just basically. got killed. His wife set us up. Oh, his so, wife era como a pinche she, Griselda Blanco type shit. Was, <laughs> she, was, she, was, she, was she charging you for being there? No, like, no, no. She, no, she was like, like, oh, stay in this house, hot amigos, house. Yeah, she was like, amigos, cual quieren, esta, esta, o esta, esta. <laughs> you know, and then, um, entonces, este, me acuerdo que un día, este, they ring the doorbell, right? Boom! Se prenden las cámaras when they ring the doorbell. So, se you guys have, so you guys have TV screens. So you guys have, like you have a it's basically a fucking safe house. Basically. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, what it is. It's a, but TV screens. Somebody rings the fucking doorbell. Se prende. Right, y todos están. Hey, va a mirar. You go. No, you go. <laughs> Off. Nothing but fugitives stay in this house. So yeah. I decide to go. Man, I'm gonna go. Salgo. And yeah, they're not in the. They're not at the door no more. They're in a in a Chevy Malibu. And uh, I'm not even yeah. knowing que, que son como ministeriales. I'm yeah. talking to them. I'm over there talking to them. And they're like, hey, ¿de quién es la casa? Y a frente veo un sign que dice este venta o renta con yeah. números de, de Guadalajara. You know, yeah. 331 area code. Yeah. Entonces, 
Y usted, muchos guys me empiezan a interrogar, ¿qué, tú, ¿qué hacen aquí ustedes? Oh, nomás lo estamos rentando por el verano. They leave, right? They peel out on me. They were rude. Y yeah. se van. So, like, about three weeks later. Pinches judiciales, probably. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Like, three weeks later, um, llega un compa de la Action con un pinche carro que compró en la Action, right? Esa yeah. no tenía horn. Estaba la like, airbag. What, what, what car was it? Like a, it was, was like a, a sedan, like a four-door sedan. Yeah. Like, you just want it at the, uh, like, like that, an that, 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 the San Diego auctions that yeah. they have, and they bring them here to try yeah. and repair them and sell them, Pinches basically. Pinches carros chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> y este, so he comes with it, y ya habíamos marcado una pizza, que era Mamma Mia's Pizza en la Las Américas. Yeah. Yeah. Sí, la pizza Mamma Mia, Simón. Y yeah, este, yeah. so, llega y le digo, like, hey, préstanos el carro. We want to go pick it up, porque pues a veces no salíamos for days. We'll be inside the house. Like at night, we, we had quads. So nos subimos por las antenas, para arriba, para, para donde está la radio station. Yeah, yeah. Y teníamos este T-Mobile, so we could use the T-Mobile's from they would work. It would catch the signal from San Diego, we could make our phone calls. And in those days, was that we had boost radios and all that, right? Yeah. The... So when we pull out, as soon as we make a right, I noticed, I was like, what the fuck was that? I don't know if it was a binoculars or no están tomando foto con una cámara with a big lens, right? Yeah. So they come right behind us, un explorer. Nice. I go around the little glorietas por allá atrás de agua yeah. caliente. And no, 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 what year was this? I'm, I'm going to say this was like 2003, yeah. 2002, maybe. So, yeah, there, there's no fucking cops running around and uh, explorers. You know? Yeah, y este, so they're following us. I call him for backup. I'm like, hey. We got tail. How you know? I'm like, man, this shit's obvious. Pues, those ways we make a right, they make a right. We make a left, they make, you know. Y este, pues, no, no, they on us, right? And they're like, all right, kill time. Go slow. Mientras que we come down, they were on the top of the hill by the radio station, too. Yeah. So I viene. And, and mi boy va manejando, yo iba shotgun, ¿verdad? Y este, pues, I'm on two phones y me están mirando. They're like, man, this who's calling for Yeah, this motherfucker's calling for backup. So they're going, and my boy's like, I'm going to punch it, I'm going to punch it. I'm like, no way, no way. Y este, we get to, uh, I guess, uh, Boulevard Las Americas. Yeah, yeah. Right there by, por, por, están los cholos. Donde está del Walmart. Yeah, galerías, the, right yeah, where the Galerias is now. So we come out on that little street. It's the way he punches it. <laughs> he punches Straight it. Straight away. Pinches lights in the grill. Y me acuerdo que bajaron los sun visors y decían FBI. Se me cayó el corazón. I'm like, oh shit. So inmediatamente marco para la casa. And I'm like, I call my boy, que el que había llegado. Y le digo, hey wey, abre el garage. Ponte un chaleco. Saca todos los chalecos, todos los juguetes. Y los pones arriba de la trash can. We're about to go right there right now. Y sales and get off on them. Yeah. Just get off on them mientras nos cambiamos nosotros. And he's like, you know, the los boosts. Perri, 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 perri. Uh, se está torando las... Because everybody's calling, you know? Yeah. Y este... Y vamos en chinga para atrás. And when we got close, miramos el garage close. So I'm like, fuck. So we had to go. And we're going. Y es como Grand Theft Auto, right? We're in the sidewalk, crashing cars out of the way. We're, eran como las cuatro. Las cuatro, las cinco, maybe. Somewhere around there. Maybe even three. I don't know. Y este... Y pues... Me agacho and my boy that's driving, he's like, why are you getting down? I'm like, it's the way he's out the window with a big ass rifle. <laughs> Pinche scope está bien grandote así. Right? So, and I tell him like, hey, let's just split up. Hay que separarnos. You go your way and I go, porque si no, la, you know, the tip on that bullet is probably like that big, you know? Yeah. It's a... Esa madre va a traspasar todo el carro. It's going to blow our fucking limbs off. As, if it hits us, it's going to blow some shit off. Legs, whatever. We're better off like... Yeah, but I want to split. You know, Some ninja shit. Two, two targets are harder to hit than one. Yeah. Let's fucking split up. So, entonces, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, um, let's give up. And I'm like, nah. Me acuerdo que yo iba con la puerta abierta. Y le digo, nah, I got shit. I remember, I remember telling him, nah, I got shit to do. Yeah. I don't know what I had to do, but I tell him, like, nah. I mean, yeah, you got nah. shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not die. Yeah. I mean, I tell you, if you were gotten out of that car, that type of vehicle that says FBI on it, those motherfuckers are going to make, make you disappear. I don't think they were cops. Y, y, y luego yo, pues, Marco, le estoy diciendo todos, esa madre dice FBI, and, and they're calling back, like, nah. the FBI can't roll in the yeah. U.S. like no that. No way. So, y, y, I mean, in Mexico. Yeah. Y entonces, este, right atrás del casino, we pull over. Y pues se baja bien tactical, right? Y este, not like the U.S., like, driver with your left hand, get the keys out, 
hell, and estos güeyes, they're like, están cortando cartucho and all this shit, like, Chah. y, y, as they're moving in, enfrente había una, I don't know if it was a casa de cambio, era un banco, pero había un, había, right, you know, right there on the, okay, estaba, estaba Tacos Junior, yeah. way down the street more. Yeah, yeah. Ahorita es a restaurant. I've seen some. It's like a fancy restaurant right now. Yeah, But back it, then, it, era una casa money, de cambio yeah. o era un banco. Yeah, it was a money exchange place, I think. Y, y, y antes, pues, estaba, estaba yeah. como un... I don't know if it was a federal, un militar. But when that happened, he told him to put the guns down. And they had a standoff. And you're like... <laughs> y ahí es cuando nos pelamos. We took off. Yeah, we could, see, we could hear the helicopter coming. We could hear the cops coming. Y otra vez en putiza para arriba. And as we're going... We get out of there, you know, and yeah. we make our way back up to the, porque pues allá arriba para the, mi compa, his mom had tenía un depa. We dumped the car in one of those depas up there by the radio stations. Pff, nos fuimos corriendo y ya they picked us up. Y este, then um, at the end of the night, we had nowhere to go, so we had to go back to the house. Oh, fuck. So we go back to this house, right? <laughs> you don't know if it's burned or not. Estamos, you don't know if it's burned. They're waiting yeah. for the, you there, no, shit estamos, like that. Estamos bien paniqueados, right? And there was this girl that would go over there, right? Y la manda, ella la mandaban a Chicago. But she was on psych meds, right? Estaba toda, estaba toda pinche mangulita, mongolita. Oh, you know, she, like, yeah, she had shit going so on. So only her pills that had, like, that had the case, I mean, the little container with her name on it, she no la dejaban llevarse nada que no tenía... So había un cajón de pills. pills de, I don't know what the fuck she was taking. Thorazine, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> y este, yo ando bien paniqueado. Que me estoy, great, fuck it. Fucking skittles. <laughs> y luego I'll strip down, me vente a la alberca, take a dip, cold ass water. Me salía, smoke a blunt. And this was just to walk your adrenaline down. Yeah, so I, was just, was like, I was just like real hyper aware que it was too much. I almost had like an overload. I mean, it sounds like you were having a... Insane panic attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Y luego, luego, so, entonces, mi, uno de mis boys que estaba ahí, que era un fugitive, le marca a su hermana y le, le dice, hey, ve a la casa de la bruja en West Covina. So, la hermana va a la casa de una bruja, right? And okay. we have her on the, on the, on the, on the boost or the next town, whatever. Yeah. We have her on speaker, right? So, le digo a la doña, hey, ¿qué son? ¿Son buenos o son malos? So, 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 people, so people will follow. You basically called a witch. Yeah, we called a witch. A witch in West Covina <laughs> to verify if these motherfuckers are trying to just yeah. pick you up. Or... No, no. And she's like, la, la bruja la hace, la hace, son buenos, pero son malos. La, I mean, cabrón, yeah. Yeah. ¿cómo que son buenos? Sí son policías, pero son malos. <laughs> y Lena told ¿y qué va a pasar? She's like, they're going to wait till you guys are tired and they're going to come over the wall and they're going to kill you guys. <sighs> Y todos, todos quedan bien paniqueados a la verga. Entonces, este, us, we huddle up and we're like, fuck it. When they come over the wall, los vamos a encañonar and we're going to tell them we want a job. That was our plan. That was plan B. Plan B was like. Y luego me hice la, me hice la, me hice la bruja, la sira, mijo. Vete, like, low to the ground y tienes yeah. un, un, un medidor del gas. Yeah. She's like, she's dead it. on. And she, she's dead on, and she's like, asómate para afuera, y está una, una gray Ford F-150. Esos son ellos. Y me huevo. Me chequeo, y fuck, se me baja el corazón. There's a gray <laughs> Ford F-150 out there, right? Y no sabemos qué hacer, right? So, so we end up opening the garage, and we're like, fuck it, let's just end this shit. Roll it. Roll let's, on. Let's go. Yeah. So we go out, we flank it, one guy up the middle, and then yo por un lado, yo por un lado. And as we run up on it, we're about to go. Y este, yo miro que no hay nadie. So I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Porque our neighbors eran del, del consulado americano. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, so, I know I know enough about the area to know exactly where that might yeah. have been. So, yeah, there's a lot of movement. There's like armored vehicles from the consulado people there. Yeah, and yeah. Shit like that. There's a lot of shit going on there. So, so we go back in the house. Pues nadie está durmiendo. Everybody's just like, oh, estamos mirando la cámara all night. The screens. Next day in the morning, they pick us up. Y nos vamos a Rosarito. We, con todas las guns, las, las envolvemos en una cobija, los bulletproof veces, todo, y llegamos al Quinta Mar en Rosarito, el Quinta Mar Hotel, we get a room, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y este, en esos días, pues, éramos tres, y pues, we were broke. So, when you're broke, nobody gets along. Todos también enojados, nadie se hablaba. Everybody wanted to fight each other every day. Fuck, it, you know, everybody will call each other out, or, or we'll go play basketball. Todos se tiran la pelota bien dura, like, yeah, check. Yeah, it's like stressed. 
he, 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 so we're in this hotel room, and um, we're in this hotel room, and nadie se está hablando. Everybody's just quiet. Just fucking looking at each other. Looking like... at each other. Y yo les digo, man, I'm out of here. I'm going to go down. Había un little bar right there en el Quinta Mar. So me bajo al bar. I'm like, fuck, I need What are you drink. drinking? Some kind of whatever beer it was. I don't know if it was a Dos X or... Uh, what's this other one? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. Bohemia. Bo I, lo I, lo I love Bohemia. That's like my beer. My yeah, that's like when I when I used to drink, man. That was my point. I used to eat, drink eight <laughs> of those and just yeah. pass the fuck out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yes, the we decided to go to Papa's and beer. And in the midst of all this shit, we're this like, is, this, we're like, this, this is like the most popular fucking hangout for Americans yeah. in Rosarito. And you're a fugitive, and yeah. you've just been through some shit. And let's go to let's go to Papa's. Papa's and let's beer. go to fucking Papa's and beer. Fuck it. <laughs> Next thing you know, I blacked out. I'm on the boulevard on the side of the wall, guacareando me, wah, wah, throwing up, throwing up. Next thing you know, we're in one of those old school guayinas, them, them taxis. Yeah, yeah, so about, the vans, the, no, the long van. Yeah, like a long station wagon. Yeah, yeah. Where the, where the seat in the back is looking it's like up looking, that way. looking backwards yeah. like your fucking tail gunner on yeah. that fucking thing, yeah. Yup, so we're in the back. Vamos tres güeyes así sentados atrás de esa madre. Yeah, people with Tijuana will know the, the guayinas, the yeah. fucking old school ones that had the, the station wagons that had the seat to the back, yeah. which were completely fucking not safe. Uh, yeah. You get, that's and, how you get fucking rammed and dead in the y, back. Y yeah, next day is checkout time, right? So um, it's checkout time. So we're like, damn, we don't got nowhere to go. So we call a taxi. Envolvemos otra vez todas las guns en la pinche cobija. Like, like, what, what type of, like what type of shit you had? Like ARs and shit like all that? Shotguns? All that. No, no, no. Like you know um assault rifles several yeah, different but, kinds because, yeah hunt, hunting rifles y, sure yeah yes the so the taxista's like he thought we had a body he's like like because we're like you know, two fucking, guys holding, a heavy fucking yeah. roll of, of of juguetes yeah and this guy's like, like what the fuck are you putting in the back of the car yeah you know entonces so he takes us back to the same house in the lipodromo right we get there and the same estamos todos bien paniqueados everybody's wearing a vest Y, y llega mi compa, el que, el que went to the auction. He came looking for his car, right? So uno de mis boys, este, era un fugitive, pero este güey no tenía tattoos, nothing. He looked like a USC student. Yeah. Ese güey le hace, I'm going to call with him. I'm a, I'll be back in a few days. Y se va al güey. He gave me a hundred dollar bill y se fue. He made a little list. ¿Qué, qué van a querer? So everybody's like, ah, pues me traes unos Air Force Ones y... He, not a paquete de, you know, some white shirts and food. He's like, all right. He takes everybody's little, su pedido. Yeah. Y se va al way. So we're in the house, me and another friend of mine, right? Y este, pues estamos bien paniqueados. All of a sudden, like an hour later, soy el, el trip, el, el bus goes off. And he's like, hey, get out of the house, the FBI. Y soy un desmadre. <laughs> un desmadre, right? And that shit sounded like, that shit was with like a mega horn. Like, it was so quiet. Cause, yeah. And we're like, what the fuck? And then he chirps it again. Get out, get out. I guess they're tackling this fool. When they crossed over, el carro ya lo sabían. Yeah. They already had reported it. So when they, they were getting ready to cross, they rushed the car. So they were in the U.S. No, no, be, they, were in, they were in the they, line. Oh, they were in the line to cross into the U.S., but yeah. before they did. Oh, they got they got swarmed. So like, hey, they're on to us. Fucking leave. So yo, I chirp it. Yeah, guys, yo, I change my voice. Hey, 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 what's up? Who's <laughs> right there? Y y sale una voz una de una lady. Y I'm like, hey, who's this? And she's like, you know who this is, motherfucker. A la verga. Le quebré la pinche chip. We're going crazy because we had no, we had motorcycle, we have quads. We didn't have no vehicle to get <laughs> no. out of there. You're going to fucking escape on a quad with all the yeah. shit in the back, yeah? Y, y, y entonces, este, next day in the morning, llegó la tía de mi compa, and she was like, I say, you guys got like 30 seconds. Get a toothbrush, let's go. And she, she didn't talk to us. She went and she took us to the east side of TJ. Allá por el Mariano Matamoros y nos dejó oh, uno. El Mariano Mataperros. Yeah, el Mat yeah. El Mat I used to call el cagadero de Drácula. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my dad used to call that area. Hey, shout out to people from Mariana Matamoros. <laughs> <laughs> y este, she, we pull up to this hotel que se llama El Paraíso, right? Yeah. Y pinches. It, it wasn't the, it, better not, it wasn't Paraíso. Fuck, no, esta madre está bien cracked out. <laughs> well, el cuarto en cuanto entras huele a cigarro. Yeah. Y luego, pues, you know, fools walking down the street with a fucking fridge on his shoulder, like <laughs> just crackheads, you know, and prostitutes and all that. Y ahí nos quedamos como por un mes y medio. Yeah. 
y until we got our resources together y arrendamos una casa but I mean it's this is that was TJ ahí yeah. ya I knew what, you're, what you're, it was about you're, you're, what was going on uh, Tijuana in that time was like shit shit ton of players from all over the place yeah. basically Tijuana was up for grabs this is uh, Ariano Felix Cartel at that time was like waning in influence and they had a separation inside of it so yeah. like, you had people from Tinaloa coming in you had people from fucking the US you had people from down south like everybody was here it was like fucking free for all Tijuana was it's a fucking free for all now, man, like you can talk about being hunted, you know, like as far as yeah, like, yeah. how that feels being hunted. Yeah. It feels, it, it just feels fucked up, but you got to like, um, compartmentalize, what is it? Yeah, compartmentalize, yeah, basically separate shit out, compartmentalize yeah. you know, what you worry about. Basically. This is this, and this is the bigger picture, you know, you. So for you with a bigger, what was the bigger picture for you getting back? Figuring out your Man, way back. But the, con, con más time que pasa, that going back, it's not a re, it stops being a reality. Like, you yeah. start like, damn. Yeah, like my, when, you know, weird shit happened to me when I was uh, in, you know, I, I remember being like five years in, on the street here working. And uh, some shit happened. Some horrible shit happened. Uh, they told me, hey, you know, vete a tu casa. You una Chevis, y nos vemos en dos días, you know, two days, just take two days off and fucking drink some beers. And I show up at my mom's house, you know, automatically go there because fucking, you know, that's how we're, that's where you, that's where we go when we freak out. Yeah. And she told me like, Hey, what do you want? This is what you wanted, right? This is cagadero que traes, you know, fucking covered in blood and shit like that coming here yeah. at four in the morning. This is what you wanted. It's like, oh, it was muy cabrón. Like I probably, and, and she said, what do you want? So I want to go back home. No, I regreso a casa. There's no, there's no going back home. Yeah, yeah, home yeah. has changed. When yeah. you're, you, when you're gone, home changes. You know, it's not there anymore. Or you change when you come back to it. So in, in a way, you just there's no coming back home. Did you get a moment like that? All the time. You know what? The whole time I was on the run, I used to miss LA so bad. It was in my mind, like a, lo a longing, a longing. Yeah. Just the and and the strange thing is when I finally got to go back, it wasn't the same no more, and I and I felt a strange feeling, like, what is this place? What I, like, like where's where's where, where, where the where the familiar faces? Like where's yeah, this yeah. place that I used to go to? Yeah, everything had changed. De hecho, había un restaurante que está ahí donde I grew up at, se llama La Barca. It's right down Vermont in twenty in between twenty fourth and twenty fifth, and I was just like longing to go eat there because yeah. that was the spot. Yes, este, I get back and I tell I tell this this my friend this girl and I'm like, hey, what's up with La Barca? She's like, man, fuck that place. That shit got roaches. Like and and the I'm quality like, went down. Yeah, yeah. And de hecho, this weekend we were we were hanging out with this dude that was a waiter there. Yeah. And I told him they're like, hey, ¿qué onda con La Barca? Tiene cucarachas. He's like, yeah, but it's not because it's dirty. They come up through the sewer. And I'm like, <laughs> same shit. Same shit. <laughs> so we like where we connect is that i was part of a group that finally showed up at your door basically right? yeah um you want to talk about that yeah a yeah, bit? yeah so you know talk us through the day this this final day of uh, of uh, of anxiety and fucking being in survival mode well, well honestly desde como un mes antes yeah. Ya lo tenía planeado. I was going to turn myself in. You, you, you were basically giving up on this whole fucking. It was being too much. It, it yeah. was too much already. I I was just like I couldn't do it no more. It was just it was just it was heavy. stress, stress, the stress, heavy. yeah, everything. And then um, so but the thing that had me conflicted was that I had a daughter. So and she was and she was she was with you. Yeah, and you know so, it was um. I, I didn't know how to tell her. I, didn't, I hadn't told her. You wanted to... Que me iba a entregar. So I... I, I was, how, how, how old was she? I would say she was about like seven, six or seven or... Yeah, no, maybe eight. Because I remember... Yeah. Y este, I, I was just... I, I, I was just going... To, I was real, really conflicted. I couldn't get my mind right. I was... Andaba mal. They chose some, some of the brothers. They ran a sweat lodge for me to get clarity. And that sweat lodge fucked me up. It it, it, it pulled shit out instead of uh, instead of uh, yeah. dousing things down. Y este, so the, I remember the night before, estaba como, estaba bris, it was like raining. It was like sprinkling, estaba brisando. Y I was in the house, and they were already parked outside. 
They yeah. have been parking outside for I, I noticed yeah, it. You you, you yeah. had eyes on you for two days before yeah. before they finally knocked yeah. knock so, on your door. So that night I remember um uh I had a watch, right? Y este el 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 watch se le, <laughs> se le quebró la band. Boom. And I straight I, I heard like a, a voice in my head say, Your time is up. So your watch breaks the thing that tells time just the strap just snaps off it you have this moment where you hear this voice right yeah this the same voice that you heard right before you had to make a run for it yeah. in la uh, same um, to me i think that voice was god yeah, se te acabó I, el tiempo. I, yeah i don't i don't know how to describe it but to <clears> me <throat> i feel like that was god's voice yes there so the very next day I'm right there in the house doing pull-ups, smoking yeah. weed. Just, but and I had I got had some people coming over, so you know me compa con unos cubanos. They're like, hey, we're gonna go have a jam session at your pad, Simon. Me pongo a limpiar y todo, and I had a big black trash bag, right? And I and I, before I go out, I always look at I tenía como un como un iPad con todas las cámaras, so I'm like, man, for some reason there's been a car parked right there different cars in the same spot for days yeah what is it y así no se iban and i'm like man al ultimo i'm like fuck it me estoy ondeando it's, it's it's in my head it's not but when i i buzz the gate open se abre i make the left i like out the corner of my eyes i los miro and i'm like damn they're fucking looking at me la, y ahí estaba el contenedor de la basura so i didn't i just threw the trash right on the right on the side and I buzzed it so it could start closing. So I could get in as it's closing, you know? Yeah. Like Indiana Jones shit. Yeah. So as soon as it's, uh, that happens, viene una pinche troca right at me. And I jumped out of the way. The truck hit the gate and knocked the gate off the rail. And I, when I got out the way, <clears> the ones in the car were already coming running. They tackled me. Boom. And I could, I could hear them say que to, to cuff my feet. They're like, yeah. tirar putazos. Yeah. Like, they've been watching me. They must have known that I was training and everything because they're like, va a tirar putazos. Get the feet, get the feet. Yeah. Y pues, pero me ponieron los cohetes en la cara y todo. You know, no te muevas, hijo de tu puta madre. Mato a la verga. Yeah. Boom, boom. It happened so quick. It was like like that. I think it happened like in five seconds. You were wrapped. I was wrapped. And um, so, you know, they were they were going all around. And then we end up at... Sonarillo. No, Sonarillo. Yeah, when the they, offices. Yeah, they bring me in there. They got their little cameras on them. Yeah. And then um, they were they, they were they were actually cool. Yeah, último when they had me, they're like, "Man, we're doing our job." Yeah. You're doing your job. We're doing our job. Yeah. And I was like, "All right, cool. Can can I make a phone call?" They're like, "Yeah." And that's when I called my daughter, and the principal answered. Yeah, si 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 me habla con K, y ya la trajeron y le y le digo mi daughter, le digo, "Hey, mami, pues." The police got me. Me van a llevar para allá donde está grandma. Y, oh, empezó a gritar. Esta, crying. Shh. And it fucked me up. It broke my heart in pieces. Ahí se me quebró corazón in pieces, you know. And she's screaming. And and I'm telling her, I'm trying to convince her that she's a big girl. That don't worry. Tell the, tell the sure, principal sure. to call your mom and have your mom pick you up from school. And grandma's going to come soon. And we're going to fix this. Yeah. Y este, y ya. Yeah. You're in this office in Sonarillo. Sonarillo. Surrounded by all these fucking estatales. Yeah. Puercos de mierda. Yeah. You know? and, y and you just got a phone call with your daughter. Your heart is in pieces on the fucking ground. But but you know what? In a way, like, you know that picture that you guys had up right here? When I'm in the, I'm in the office right there? Yeah. Con los estatales. The, the, uh, they took your t-shirt off because it's impressive that you have yeah. tattoos on They're you. They're like, right? throw some gang signs. <laughs> Tírale, tira barrio. Tira barrio para que se vea. You yeah. know, y, y, y. But at... Even from right there, I already, even though my heart was broken, I felt a lot of weight come off my shoulders. But I, had, I had a lot of weight on them. It was, you, you, yeah, felt, ya me agarraron, so se acabó you, felt, you, felt, you felt the conclusion coming. Yeah, so then, um, you know, me llevan a here, there, there, immigration, whatever. Y ya me llevan that, <coughs> that walk que, yeah. que cruzas a San, a San Isidro. Yeah, right? they, they walk you to San Isidro border crossing. Con home, Homeland Security, ICE, yeah. todos esos güeyes. There was a whole party waiting for you. Yeah, y ya llego allí, and they're putting my name, y no sale, and I'm like, ah, la verga, a lo mejor I'm not even wanted. 
<laughs> he's like, I'm gonna look out. And he's like, Do you, you know your social security? I'm like, Yeah. And I'm telling them, and, and they're like, No, it's not <clears> coming you're up. Fine. You're fine. Yeah. And I'm like, What the fuck? He de hecho, they leave me in the lobby. I'm in the lobby. I think I'm cuffed to the chair, but I'm in the lobby. And I'm like, and your name's not coming up. Your social isn't coming up. You're yeah. The detention center. Well, yeah. what happened was that when you're gone for that long, uh, Sacramento locks you out of the system. So no sale nada. <laughs> y ya, pero al rato sí salió. <laughs> y luego llegó LAPD. Llegaron por mí como a las three hours. Y me llevaron. Y me acuerdo todo el camino. As we're going up. They just I, drove you. They, they drove all the way down from LA for you. Picked they came you from up. Vegas. <clears throat> when they got the call, they were in Vegas. Yes, they, they took me all the way to L.A. to the 77th Division Police Station. Yeah, it empezó todo. I just, it, that, that was the, <clears throat> that was what you were dreading and running from all yeah. that time. And you're, now you're there. Y luego, I go to my, because cuando te agarran a las 72 hours, they got to take you to court to arraignment, right? Yeah. So I go to that first court arraignment. And I'm, y le pregunto, yo, I ya tenía lawyer. Cuando estaba en la police station, the lawyers that came to see me, they're like, relax, we got this shit. So, cuando yo llego a la court, le digo a la, me ponieron un, como a public defender for that moment, that day, while they got all my paperwork ready. Yeah. Y le digo, hey, um, este, how can I get bail? And they're like, you're not getting no bail, you're looking at the death penalty. Fuck. Y pues ahí cuando you hear that word, oh, it's another yeah. outer body experience. You're like, it's the, like a second death. Yeah, it's like the death penalty. And everybody in the tank, it's a court. Everybody's looking at you like, ay, güey. Ay, cabrón, está pesado este güey. Yeah, yeah. Y este, y ya. Then after the court that day, me llevan to the L.A. County Jail. Y ahí empieza all the gang shit. Y yeah. ahí, <clears throat> hey, ¿quién eres? ¿De dónde eres? ¿Cómo te dicen? Y pues... Yo nunca, I hadn't used Conejo in 15 years. 14 and some change. You have to fucking say it again. E even my real name sounded strange. Yeah. You know, I hear my first name and my last name. I'm like, ah, that's not even me no more. I'm, I'm this other guy. I'm not him no more, you know? Y, y me quedé ahí como un año y medio. Y este... That's a year and a half in L.A. County. And fighting the case. Y one day in court, they're like, el, el lawyer llegó y I got a deal for you. You'll go home today. Fuck. That so one. you're you so hold on. You're you fucking running. Shout out to um Stuart Gold Farm. It's a beast. <laughs> you're running in you're in Mexico, fucking wild shit happening. Yeah. It ends LA County for a year where you have to basically reconnect to your past in a way yeah, because it's like all the to. gang shit had to just come back. Yeah. Imagine they didn't make it easy for you. Es, es que yo, like, by that time, by the fifteen years. Yo ya me identificaba como mexicano. I just identified as Mexican. Yeah. Like, even when I was in jail, like, ¿Quién es el que canta corridos? <laughs> Bring your ass over here and yeah. canta unos corridos. And, I'll, you know, I'm going to put all the food. Just, I want this to be a Mexican party in my bunk. I will. So it's like, you know, and, and, and I just identified as being Mexican at that point. So this, you know, this, this, uh, you know, this, this Kenny kid we see in, in some of these pictures, yeah. you know, that, that wasn't you, but you had to kind of like, kind of reconnect with yeah, that again. Yeah, I had to, I had to reconnect, yep. Y este, y pues digo, un día I went to court. So they, y, so they take you to court. Did you know that that was going to happen that day well, when they took you to court? Well, like, <clears throat> like a month antes, my lawyer came to see me and he's like, I got good news and I got bad news. I'm like, man, give me the bad news. And then he's like, the bad news is they just offer you three years. And I was like, that's good. Give it to me. Because I already been there a year and a half. Yeah. I would only have to do another like 10 months or something, you know. I don't want to play with it. I don't want to risk it. Yeah. Like, los, no, 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 no. I could get you a better deal. I'm like, nah, I don't want a better deal. <laughs> that's, just, that's good to me right there, you know. Settle for that. Yeah. Y este, y un día, and then when I ended up going to court, my my whole thing was like, I'm going to argue with this. So I'm taking those three years today. Yeah. Y llega el güey y me dice, look. We're gonna we're gonna plead you down from murder to um, manslaughter, voluntary manslaughter. We're gonna give you a six year suspended sentence. Fuck. We're gonna suspend your sentence. We're gonna let you out on five year probation. Y este, you go home, you'll be home by seven o'clock tonight. And I was like, what the oh, fuck? Y sí, me llevaron por abajo de la court, saliendo otra court. I signed the deal, some papers, 
Y ya al último, ya everybody's going back to the jails, to the different jails. Yeah, y yo estoy en un tanque, se está acabando toda la people. All right, you gotta go to this other tank. Y ya llego, me meten en un tank y está, está this Asian dude, a black dude, and a white dude, and two Mexican dudes, right? Yeah. And the two Mexican, every, they're happy. The two Mexican fools are happy. They're going home. Yeah. También happy los güeyes. And they're like, yo, yo, bro, are you Conejo? I'm like, yeah. They're like, man, it's my birthday today. Can I get an autograph? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in the tank. I do an autograph. Y uno por uno, they're calling them out. And now I'm by myself in that tank, by myself. It's cold as fuck. Were you thinking that maybe maybe it's a little yeah. fucking joke? Maybe it's because, yeah. you know what? We reneged on that fucking joke. Yeah, We're yeah. just no, doubting everything. That's I, that's exactly what I was doing. Fuck. That's exactly what was going on. Y el Asian dude, este, he was G'd up. He was, you could tell he was a savage. So, y no hablaba. Yo no estaba hablando, and I was like, I gotta get ready. This shit looks like it's. Vamos a agarrar putazos ahorita. Yeah. So we were just quiet, pero también they called them out. Now I'm in there alone, tío. I'm like, man. Y finally they call me. Se abrió todo el gate, pero donde entran los buses, sort of like here. How yeah, it yeah. is here? Yeah. Se abrió, y estaba mi girl y mi, y mi sister ahí. Y nos fuimos caminando, salí con un, en un black paper jumpsuit. Yeah. Te dan ya Crocs. I had some black Crocs. He said, me so being strange because, well, it's been a lot of years. Downtown had changed a little bit, you know? And I'm just like, yeah. when we get in the car, we get to the car, they go, call, call Kay, call my daughter. And they call her and they tell her, somebody wants to talk to you. And she's like, okay. And then, me ponen a mi, empieza a llorar. Because she thinks I'm a, a cardboard cutout. She actually yeah. said that. Why are you guys playing with me? Why are you guys showing me a car cardboard cut out of my dad? Yeah. And I'm like, I, well, I start crying with her, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, nah, ya, ya salí, mami. And we're like crying. We're both <laughs> crying. Like, me and my daughter were just like, I love you, I love you, daddy, I love you. Y pues, estamos los dos, like, we're like, ah. Y me la, me la trajeron como las two weeks. O a la week me la trajeron. And you're free? Was, yeah. Y you're, she, free. you're out. Yeah. You're fucking out. And it was crazy. I got out and my only, in my mind, I was like, I need to go back to TJ. <laughs> that's the, all I wanted to do. Because where's, where, where was she? Here. So that's your heart, man. You yeah. wanted to go back to your heart. E, e, and no, no, not even that. I just, I wanted to come back to that. Like, this is, this, this, this is, is my this home is, now. This when, is, yeah, this is where you were. Yeah, I get, I get that. And, and it was like, you know, the, okay, I went to LA, whatever. And I was like, I felt displaced, like. That's cool. todo, todo me cambió. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, it's not the same no more, you know. Yeah, my heart was here in this city. Yeah. Y, and it took me like a little bit para agarrar mis documentos. And I came, I, I ended up coming back to the city. Jesus. I was scared. I came through the border. I'm like. It's like, well, you're not going to be able to cross back. Somebody's going to fucking bomb yeah, some shit. Yeah, you're yeah. like, what the fuck? Y yeah. luego, pues, I was on probation, right? Yeah. And in my, the way I had pro my probation was any police contact is a violation and you owe us those six years Fuck. so i would owe them four and a half or whatever yeah. so you had to you, basically so, be santo santo sí. santo de tu patron y de, de hecho me acuerdo que un día crucé para atrás y me dice el migra me dice el wey hey are you on probation le dijo yeah man i'm on vacation i like flipped it on him like real quick i'm like yeah i'm on vacation y ya me dice wey y, y you know and, and even that you know but you, you so you 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 went through this whole that's a fucking lot to go through. Yeah. Uh, you're out. Everything you were running from is now behind you. Yeah. Do you have a moment of like, now? What the fuck am I going to do? You know, like, yeah, yeah. was the music there still? Or did, like, where did that awaken? Also, you know, the other shit you started doing, you know? Yeah. Because well, it yeah i was waiting as soon as i took a week off but after that first week i went straight to a studio i told my girl i need to go to studio i, I mean that, i mean imagine the inspiration not the energy and the shit you have to say and, and it's crazy because the whole time i was in jail i never wrote my my spirit was lost i didn't have no spirit to write so you're blocked yeah i was blocked. blocked and that never has happened to me ever pero cuando como a los tres meses antes de que saliera Un día me levanté, and I'm like, I feel like writing, and I started writing. Yeah. So when I walked out of the county jail, I walked out with 300 songs. Fuck. I just was just writing, putting it away, putting it away, writing, so writing, this, writing. So that's all of this had you on pause, basically. Yeah. yeah. Y este, pues, salgo y le, le marco al David, 
he was on the East Coast somewhere, and he's like, and so David. So people don't know who David is. David is um, David Ayer. <laughs> David is a David Ayer is our David Ayer is who connected us. Yeah, you know? like yeah. so. I went from being on the group that arrested you yeah. back in TJ, yeah. you know, to like going off on my own fucking adventure. You went on a, on your adventure, and then and this weird, crazy dude named David Ayer who's a cool as shit, you know. Yeah. But like he's a he, you know, he's been through some shit too. Yeah, you know he we became friends, and I was like, hey Ed, and there's this guy named Conejo that you 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 might know. Like I think you guys you, I think you guys picked him up. I saw he was like, fuck, I do crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy. And uh, he calls me over. He's like, hey, dude, I'm going to hang out with him. You want to come over? And I was like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you have any fucking ill will, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, show up. Uh, a surreal moment because I, I'm, I've been to your place before, you know? And I remember walking up to the sigil that you had on the ground. Yeah. And not stepping on it. I stepped around Look, it. that's crazy. Okay, that same sigil, I had that sigil on the street outside of yeah. where I lived at. Yeah. L Los ustedes, you guys were parked on that sigil. Yeah. When they came to kidnap me years before, the kidnappers were parked on that sigil. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody parked on that sigil. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a seal. It's, yeah. a, it's a seal. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But basically, when I saw that, you know, I have some of that in my life, too. Yeah. When I saw it, I respected it. So, like, that was kind of like a first thing, uh, this first thing that I thought linked us. You know, I saw that on the ground, and I said, this guy has a connection to this. So I stepped around it, and I showed my respect in that regard. And then we talked for about, I don't know, three in the morning. Right? Yeah, yeah. These, both of us fucking met. Had some moments of quietness, and then we just got, went into like a full conversation yeah. about how both of us were in some to some crazy it's shit. It's like a, it's like our lives like intertwine. Like I, yes, from, you might have passed this way while I was passing that yeah. way, and we and just all, and all of a sudden like we find ourselves in this room, and David is there, we just finished eating some tacos, and we're talking about some crazy shit that just we just went through in our yeah. lives. And in a lot of ways, I mean, the mirroring aspect of it, you know, you're like your daughter, your corazón, basically. Yeah. You know? And I tell people, oh, I have a daughter too, you know. Yeah. Uh, you were spit out by Mexico, basically, in a way. I was spit out by Mexico too. You find yourself back at a place where you thought was home. You know, I went off and did two years of trying to figure my shit out in the U.S. as far as my citizenship. And then came back to a Tijuana that I didn't know. You know, that was like, for me, it was like, everything was upside down between yeah. you and me. And, uh, and I remember specifically when you talked about your spirituality, you know, like some of the aspects of that for me were like, oh, like he was going through some of the same shit and looking for some of the same direction. Right. Like, yeah. like something to believe in, something to protect you, something to have, you know, be behind you. In my case, you know, Going up, growing up in Tijuana and having being exposed to some of the stuff for me it was Santa Muerte. Yeah, you know, that was introduced to me. Uh, and then, you know, remember having this moment where you have some scars on you that were put on you ceremonially, yeah, cer ceremonially initiation right? cuts. And I have, you know, one on my palm, so I was like, even that was like kind of like freaky for yeah. me. Like, both of us had scars on us. Um, what. what can you can you talk a little bit about yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what I asked for you? Like what what uh, what is what is that element of spirituality that you found while you were on the run that kept you, I guess, kept you. It did keep you safe because you're right did here it. right now, right? What you call it? Um, it's funny how because, uh, like my family, they're like Catholic. Yeah. My mom's Christian. Yeah. And some of her sisters are Jehovah's Witness. I didn't believe in spirituality. I get it. Like I didn't, I didn't have a relationship with with a higher being ever. You, you were, you were. I uh, mean, I'll, I'll get in some shit and be like, "Hey, God, <laughs> I don't wanna, I'm not gonna do it ever again," and I'll make this crazy little deal. Like, yeah, yeah, no. Eres católico, católico de costumbre, uh -huh. nacimiento, cultura, like yeah. cultural Catholic, basically. Most Mexicans are. Yeah, and then you know, my mom became Christian later, and and but I didn't, I didn't believe in nothing. Y y me acuerdo que estaban andaban en Guadalajara una vez. Y me habla mi compa, le dice, hey, vente para acá. You already got your plane ticket, just go. Jump on the plane. Acá, we'll go shopping over here. Let's go. 
some fool wants to give you a record deal he tells me so i fly into i fly in right here yes there i I meet him right there at um we go to a restaurant somewhere right here casi por la revolucion right where it makes the turn there was this mexican restaurant like right on the corner yeah and and then um and then i go back to guadalajara and then he calls me again okay the dude's here now he wants to he wants to talk to you so i fly in again and we meet him over there uh, casi enfrente donde está el Hotel Rosarito. And this dude, I knew him from L.A. I, I didn't know him personally, but I knew him. Yeah. Y este güey, yo le, yo le había mirado un chingo de collares. Yeah, so he has to wear the, uh, the ceremonial yeah. necklaces on. And then, but I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. For me, I thought he was from the Latin Kings. I thought this guy was a <laughs> Cubano, Puerto Rican. That's what I thought it meant. I thought it meant that... Yeah, he's some sort of Caribbean dude, like some sort yeah, of Caribbean connection. Yeah. I, I just, for some reason, I thought he was from the Latin Kings. Yeah. But then I meet him, right? And he's like, all right, everything's cool. But before we go any further, my madrina's got to say it's all good. I'm like, your madrina? What the fuck is that? Yeah. Like grown man, we're talking about his madrina. Yeah, I'm gonna call my my godmother basically <laughs> to ask if if it's it cool, cool if we can work with you. Y así empezó todo. So I I I mi boy tenen una casa like behind the Home Depot, donde está el Pemex atrás de en Rosarito. Yeah, somewhere in the back in a gated community right on the beach. Era una casa de unos judíos that we knew these Jewish fools that had a bunch of pads and we could rent them and all that. So, yeah. So I pull up one night, some misty night. Y este está un güey ahí todo de blanco con un pinche gorrito bien mamón. I thought he was like a chef or a fucking it's a ceremonial yeah, all but, white. But it's all white, all white and, 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 and this little, little little turban little, thing on. Yeah, him. so I'm like, what the fuck's that dude doing? And then that lady's right there, la madrina, right? Yeah, the the the, the basically the leader of yeah. this group was standing there. So she's like, siéntate. She started me hace las me lee las cartas, right? Me da todas las cartas, she lays them out, and she's like, she tells me a bunch of shit that it didn't mean nothing to me. I'm out, I, so yo le pregunto, hey, pero ahí no dice que soy fugitivo, que me andan buscando la policía. Yeah, yeah this is a very important shit doesn't show up in this reading. And, so then, like, and she's like, no, estás bien. And I'm like, a ver, hazlo otra vez. So she makes me cut the deck or <laughs> blow on it. She yeah. makes me do something. She runs it again, second time. No sale ahí la policía, nada. No. I do it three times total. And me dice, eh, voy a para la otra semana. Te voy a traer algo. So, She's going to see you next week. Yeah. She's going to bring something on. So over. next week, I'm, uh, we meet up in this house. Cause that, it's a little bit past Cantamar. Yeah. This guy we knew, he, he, he had like a compound over there. So, so we pull up to this house. But this time when I pull up, Mira un chivito amarrado de la pata ahí. I'm like, what the fuck? She's going to make going to roast this yeah, goat or something? Ahorita. Y este, y ya, next thing you know, I'm blindfolded, shit starts. This is an initiation. That yeah, she, she starts like saying this, this, she's talking a language I never heard before. It just sounds like mumbo jumbo, blah, 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 whatever, which was um, Yoruba and Nigerian. Yoruba, yeah. And, and then, um, y me da un collar, este collar que tengo aquí, este de Ochozi, y Ochozi is like justice and. He, you know, he sees more things, but but the main he thing is justice. justice. So I'm so like zoned out, and she's whispering things in my ear, and she's telling me, no matter if they speak against you, shit's gonna be worthless. She's telling, she's she's like hypnotizing me. Está diciendo, you're invisible, no one can see you, you're untouchable. She's telling me all these things while she's doing chants and songs and and all this shit's going on, and um. I walked out of there like a new man. I honestly felt something invisible. Changed. Something happened right there. Was was this uh, like how long did that take? Was it like a like full ceremony? It was it was it was about maybe like an hour or two. I would say. Y, y me acuerdo driving back. We're driving back, and me said, "Mi boy, hey, qué te qué te dijo?" And I'm like, "No, she said that I'm fucking invisible. No one could see me. But did I'm you untouchable? Did did like did, did that have power? That shit had power. It, it, I think it, it lasted like a year. Porque pues yo andaba en chinga acá, you know. Y, yeah, you y, were working. Y pues I, no, I was never loud or nothing. We were always real low yeah, key. Yeah, we're low discreet, key. Low key. Working, but, but, low key. But, but I had the stuff there. Y yeah. Nunca me pararon. So I was like, this shit's real. It's just. I mean, if you 
this shit's real. If you believe in it, right? The, the yeah. things the, I heard somebody say, things have the power that we give them over us. Or black magic at its core is just a form of weaponized psychology that we use on ourselves and on others. But uh, if somebody hands you something with a power and tells you what that power is, and you can convince yourself of that power, I mean, you will figure shit out as far as, the, you know, and that's is this exactly what, That's exactly what happened. And I never seen that lady ever again, right? So I ended up meeting Cubano allá en el siglo XXI. Okay. I met this Cubano in the siglo, just walking through the... Yeah, walking through the, the siglo XXI is basically a big swap meet. A big swap meet. Yeah. Y este, and I'm asking him questions and this, this, and that. And then I meet this, this another Santera, this lady, right? Yeah. She, she passed away. And it's crazy because she passed away a year ago. And last month on the on her year anniversary of passing, they ran inside her botanica and they killed one of her sons. <laughs> yeah. I got the picture. I'm going to show it to you when we're done. Yeah, this... this. <laughs> Cause it's a grimy world over here. Y ella, pues esa señora, she'll be lying to fools. She'll be lying to, to big time like fools that were. The people don't realize how it's it's that that aspect, that spiritual aspect, brujas, santeros, all that shit is intertwined with like a lot of heavy shit in Mexico, and you know, I mean, they take risks too. No, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. They do a trabajo on a dude, and that motherfucker doesn't get what he wants, and he'll yeah. show up to this bruja's house and fucking kill everybody. Yeah. yeah. No, y, y, y me acuerdo que, so I started messing with her, me entregó mis, me hizo una ceremony, me entregó en todos mis collares que venía haciendo este como el Ewa, Yemayá, Ochuno, Watalai, Changó, these five collares, and I remember I walked out of the film like the Dalai Lama, like, uh, like floating on one toe type shit. Yeah, this, this, it, uh, yeah, I get it. it, it I don't know, like some, some, what I went through when I went through some of that myself. It gave me purpose and belief, you know. Uh, I felt like, oh, this is all part of something, and I'm part of some sort of plan of some sort. So when I was working, I felt that is behind me and around me, right? Uh, I don't know if, if for you, you had, you know, it, also it gave me a discipline. Like, hey, tienes que pagar la manda. You know, if you want something, you have to pay for it. Yeah, was something yeah. that we had, you know. If you want to go and... Uh, you know, ask for something you have to give something you yeah know? so like it would be you know, a big bottle of tequila it would be yeah. the, the candles it could be going off and doing a favor for somebody that you didn't like shit like that that was like the or walking barefoot up in cerro colorado like yeah. that was a man that we would do like it gave me not only direction and purpose but also kind of discipline around it to humble myself you know yeah did I you think, find some of that i think that's what that's what happened with me it, like humbled me e e Y me acuerdo que un día la señora me dice, hey, vente, we're going to have like a, cere like a drumming ceremony, like a, like a party, basically, right? Yeah. Y su, su botánica was on the corner, on the opposite corner del mercado de todos. Yeah, yeah. Right? On, it, it was always there, and I never noticed it, you know? But once I start fucking with her, I'm like, oh, shit, this is a big-ass botánica. So un día yo llego y abro la puerta, and once I go in... There's a gang of armed dudes inside. So, <laughs> ah, fuck. So, so I you, think you were in there for for some work, basically, or to yeah. pick up something, and all of a sudden you find yourself surrounded by cartel guys yeah, in this yeah. fucking room. And no, no, and there was real federal police in there. Yeah, and cartel guys, and everybody was there. That, that makes it. And of I sense. seen, the, I seen, and then I go into the room where the the drum is going on, and I'm like, oh shit, that's that politician from the news. <laughs> and then like there was like some prostitutes right there, and then. And everything's like, they're all, so I was like, oh, I like this. This is my get down because no one's tripping on nobody. No, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a neutral ground. Yeah, y este, y luego estoy ahí, and then this dude's talking, and he goes, he just saying it. He's like, mi compa was wanted for murder, y se rayó en palo. Palo Mayombe, he got scratched. Yeah. And he beat his case, and that shit, bing, fucking light bulb. And I was like, Palo Mayombe, what's that? Yeah. And he's like, here, I'm going to show you. Y me llevó atrás, in the back, back, back of the botanica, tenían otro cuarto donde tenían, like, a and pot con un ganga. Un ganga. Yeah, un ganga. ganga. It's like a, basically a ceremonial cauldron. Uh, cauldron that has, can I, I mean, you, you know yeah. better than this. Basically, it has a, a spirit yeah. that they put in there, and basically they hold it in. And that shit fucked me up because there was a skull right there, bones popping out, sticks, 
And, and that shit looks scary, you know, that shit like some exorcist shit to me. I'm like, esa madre que? Esa madre es el muerto, la enganga, la prenda. Oh, y esa madre que? Nah, esa madre te hace el paro. Y así me quedé. And then I finally got initiated in Palo. I remember, I remember it was a savage, brutal initiation that when it was, I, it was, it was, a, was it, uh, it was like 18 hours or some shit. Fuck. It's like endurance. Yeah, endurance. And, and it, it wiped me out. And, and, and I always would like, when I meet other paleros, I'll be like, hey, this is how my ceremony, my mine was. And they'll be like, what the fuck? That's some like, that's some other shit. Like, <laughs> Well, it, it's, just it's different for everybody, you know? Yeah, it's different for everybody. But also, Tijuana has a very specific style of every, everything. Yeah. It's really hardcore here yeah. for some reason, specifically because, of, I don't know, the. It's just the environment. The environment here is very different. Like, from my, my initiation compared to some of the initiations that I have, that I've seen and heard people share of Santa Muerte or stuff like yeah. that in other parts of Mexico, like, I was buried underground for a night. That yeah, was yeah. my initiation. And then, like, they were like, ¿Qué? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, because it's fucking hardcore here. No, I don't y, know what, y, what it is. Y cuando te, they initiate you in Palo, te dan un trago, right? I don't know what's in it, but now I know. And this was that, and that, when that happened, I didn't know, but it was like, it was almost like being on shrooms. Yeah, it's a pa pa peyote or some and, shit, probably. And when they took off the blindfold after all these hours of me being in the dark, I'm like, what the fuck? Dead goats and root, and it's just bloody. I'm in a room that's blood blood filled everywhere it's birth and there's intestines and they're they're like it's a birth know. it's a birthing ceremony just a, you're born out of blood basically yeah in that moment yes and then from right there my whole thing started because me i'm like a me gusta buscarle yeah i, I enjoy knowledge and you know knowledge is power and i just like i started digging and digging and digging and digging and Next thing you know, I'm I'm deep into it, and now I have a purpose. Now I have something. Okay, when I talk to it, it talks to me back. It's an anchor. And 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 I felt like it 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 like saved me, it saved my life in a way. It was weird. And and I had martial arts too. You know, I was trained, so all these things brought all these balances to my life: my spirituality, my physical self, and um. You know, and and. Just my awareness, like it was all about awareness, like with y, y, y ahí llegaban, ahí llegaban all kinds of cops, que, eran, que they were in the religion, you know? Yeah, that's that's the thing that people don't understand. Like when I talk about, hey, yo era de voto a Santa Muerte, but that, that, that's a cartel shit. It didn't matter here. Like yeah, it, was, yeah. it was like this is shit. This, if you were palero, santero, Santa Muerte, whatever you want, you would go into a place and the people, the, the, it was like a truce there. Nobody would fuck with each other. If you were in that type of shit, in that type of environment, that's ahí. Nobody does shit here. This is holy ground. No, you know, y este, they would respect that shit. They used to. Esa, esa señora que era, que era mi madrina, este, she would burn people. Like, as I got to know her, I was like, oh, this bitch is fucking crooked as fuck. That she would burn people with each other, like like it, lie to them, or she would yeah. put some shit on them, yeah. So their shit will be fucked up, and then they'll come to her to fix it, and she'll charge them out the ass, you know. Yeah. Y, y este, I was telling you off air que que un día I go in there with my daughter, you know, y no vea parking, so I park almost in this little little strip mall that's casi almost right across the street of Mercado de Todos. Yeah, yeah. But she was down this way. Y este, by that school, that's right there. Es una, la, no sé cuál número, la 21, la 3, or some shit. Yeah. Y este, and as I'm leaving, a dude creeps up on me. You know, y me, pues, I get on alert. Yeah. Y, y, el, y el, él me dice, este, he's like, hey, no, no te andes metiendo allí. Because yeah. we got orders to smoke our ass. <laughs> and if, and the order is whoever's in there, smoke them too. But I seen you go in there with your daughter, so we stopped it. Yeah. But don't go in there no more. You know, and Fuck. and I was like, oh shit, good looking out, man. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I won't. And I did. I ended up going back, but yeah, like sporadically, like n like I had it on my mind, like esta cabrona se la van a chingar. And she's fucking up. She's yeah. doing. She's doing. She I mean, it, it was part of the. It was part of the business. Yeah. Like, in a lot of these places, that that shit is just part and parcel of these uh, some of these uh, businesses where they. They're conciliarity or like a con people that counsel each other. People, yeah. That's where people want to ask questions, you know? 
And, you know, a lot of horrible shit happens sometimes in there, you know? Yeah. Like you said, a year to the day, you know? Yeah. She died, and a year to the day, they walked into the Botanica right there. Yeah. Donde está el Seta Gas? Like, right across the street, right next to that gas station on the corner. They walked in and, and gave it to her son, you know? Yeah. So it's... it's Death? It's crazy, you know? Death? It's, yeah. Death? I mean, it's a business of life and death. And you say... Like, for somebody that has been surrounded by death for so long in a lot of ways, and to say that, no, but I want to live, you know? I think uh, in, I think in a lot of ways, all of you describe from your initiation, that's a kind of death in a way. Yeah, it's a rebirth. All those initiations are from rebirth. From leaving home, that's another death. Finding a new home, like here in Tijuana, and then having that shit snatch away from you, that's another death. So like, so if you think about it, you know, it's interesting that you talk about ghosts a lot in your in your in your music. Yeah, you know? that's uh, yeah, that all of those uh, other conejos are basically ghosts. You know, that's a that's yeah. a, that's an interesting way to kind of look at that. So then, uh, you know, we meet, kind of hang out. Then I kind of start looking at your 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 whole journey. You know, see you in a movie. You know, <laughs> see that you know, fuck, uh, the tax collector movie. Um, and specifically, you know, you're, you're playing a, a heavyweight from Guadalajara come in and take control. Yeah, yeah. And I, like when I was watching it, like, vamos a ver cómo le hace este cabrón. No? <laughs> and I saw you fucking from the shirt, the jewelry, the shit you were drinking, uh, the the brujería you had around you. Yeah. It's like, ese cabrón se la sabe. That motherfucker knows. I don't know if you consulted a little bit for that or did you have a say in some of the shit you were kind of expressing? Well, well con el Dave, pues... El Dave, he's 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 open to it. If the shit's gonna be dope, he's yeah. open to it. And since he's my boy, I'm like, I want his shit to be fucking fire. So I'm like, <laughs> hey, wait, how, how about we do this and this and this and this? Let me, can is it cool if I say it like this? Yeah. And I'll, I'll I'll show him, and he'll be like, fuck yeah. Now, now whose idea was the fucking cooler? I told him. I told Dude, him about that. That shit. When I saw like when I saw that the cooler and how it was arranged. Yeah, man. Yeah. Did you see that somewhere? I mean, did you see that somewhere? I mean, you see those things here in the city. Exactly. In, in the city, this was, this was, it became a a common thing. It's not like 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 um just a neatly stacked head <laughs> hand like situation in a in a cooler. And, and you know, acá they're artistic with it. You know, <laughs> I, I remember walking into the uh, crea. There's a there's a soccer field there where the where the ring where you run around there. Yeah. And there was a wheelbarrow in the middle of that field that had a body in it. And I had to walk over there with a digital camera to take pictures of it. And this it was stacked just like that cooler. So I remember uh. seeing that. The <laughs> arms, the head and the I mean, it had more body parts in there. But I remember seeing that and I was like fucking a while back. Yeah, this is how it is. But I saw that and I was like like whoever's consulting on this shit is you know sabe like has seen some of that shit and I, it was shock it was it was a uh, it brought me back this shit that was that was that was fucking interesting to see that in in the, in that uh well you know when you see it once it's like ah then you see it again it's like ah and then when you start seeing it in different ways like i said fools are artistic with it yeah and then you just it's just like normal, you know? That, that normalization. Of whole, so also the people need to know that you're, you're normal and my normal, whatever. What Like we went through some shit, right? Yeah. We went through some things. And the sense of normal you get after all of that makes us abnormal to the rest. You know, somebody shows up with you and it's like, hey, Conejo, look at this weird cartel video that I saw somewhere. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, mira. Oh, oh, this guy's probably left-handed, you know? <laughs> like, I, Conejo, like, look at the horrible shit. No, I'm just looking at the details now because that, you've been past that shit. Yeah, yeah. Know? So, in a way, it takes something from you, I, too. I remember when I was um when I was still on the run, right? I made a call to over there. And then I'm like, hey, fool, check out this video. And I tell him what to type, right? Yeah. And then um, this guy, like, he brings it up. And he's like, fool, you, you, you made my son cry. He never, I'm like, for why you watch it with him? I'm, I told you. <laughs> and he's like, no, wey, lo dejaste bien traumado, wey. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was this crazy cartel video that I kept on watching over and over. I would just watch it. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Look at this shit. Well, a lot of those videos, man, 
the early videos from Narco Blog and shit like that. Yeah. All of those videos, actually, a lot of the traffic was in the Middle East, the people watching them. So when ISIS happened and all those the high, high, t like torture videos, people getting shot and fucking yeah. burned and shit like that, all of those were, were inspired by the videos coming out of Mexico back <laughs> in the day. So that's, that, that's a wild connection with that. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know and, that. And yeah. this, the, the, just being desensitized by it. So that kid was of a generation that wasn't exposed to that. But now you have kids that are just, hey, check this out. WhatsApp Messenger. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I'm not saying it doesn't fuck with me to see it because it does still yeah. fuck with me to yeah. see. I see a video and I'm just like, I, I think for me it's uh, when I see things in a video or in a picture that I can relate to something in my life now. So if I see somebody that looks like a friend of mine, or if I see something that reminds me of something that I saw, a witness, or did, that shit just fucking. Whoosh. It's a moment of, whoosh, you know, it's not healthy too, man. It's fucking yeah. triggering. You know, plus it's like um. I don't know it's just like reality when i see those videos it's just like this is reality this is real yeah this is not like yeah this is this is not a sepia toned uh movie somewhere where you know, some people are trying to depict something that they really don't don't understand this is like oh full color you know the cooler from el Oxo with the duct tape around it <laughs> yeah, you, know? yeah. you can tell where they bought all that and also the fact that the guy was probably alive when they cut him apart because of the blood I remember when we when we shot those scenes, like the the ceremonial scene in the tax collector. Yeah. Well, I seen behind the footage, seen that you know, like my girl, or whatever was filming. Everybody that's shooting, that was on that team, was just quiet. Like, ah. yeah, there's something to it. Yeah, and then when it was all done, they shut down the whole. Ya se acabó todo. You know, I took some basics, some some sage. I had a big ass hawk feather. Yeah. And I told my my, my wife was pregnant. With my with my other daughter, my younger daughter Scarlett, and um, I was like, man, we gotta get blessed up. The, even though this was a movie, no, the something. energy was real. I felt it, and I could see all these guys are fucking spooked. Yeah. So they felt it, you know, all these camera guys and all this. No, man, I, I, I watch it and I recognize what I was seeing as something that you based on something that is actual real. Y me acuerdo que que ahí con la madrina, I met this dude, right? He was era un brujo de México, era un palero. Y un día me dice el güey, Google call me siete. So he's like, hey, siete. And, and his whole thing was that once a year, they would feed a homeless guy to his prenda. Fuck. Right? In Mexico <laughs> City, they would take him off the street. They would feed him all week, shower him, everything. A homeless guy. And at the end of the week, they would, they would feed him to the prenda, right? Yeah. Decapitate him. Yeah, give him all the blood. Yeah. So, Fuck. like, I remember que un día me dice el güey, hey, que onda siete? You ready to go get on that level? And I'm like, hell nah. Me is survival. Yeah. I'll get on any level as far as like to protect my loved ones or me. Pero nomás por some, that's like some. Some predatory shit. Yeah. It's, it's, almost, it's almost like you're crazy. Yeah. I'm crazy. Yeah. But it's different. Yeah. That's, a, that's some predatory shit. There's sinister side of it. I mean, narco, the narco satanico guy that, uh, that, uh, picked up a, a teenager sure. to put in a prenda yeah. you know that, that mexico has a history of that. well this 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 sounded just like that so yeah. i was just like that they've they've i mean they've found a bunch of crazy shit prendas and and and, and ngangas recently probably two three years ago down there with yeah it's still just trying to figure out who the so bodies it's, are it's still going on then it there. is it is it is not only still going on it has grown exponentially it's everywhere right now like you, you yeah the people sometimes so sometimes and like uh like have a connection I have a connection in, in the U.S. where people ask me about Mexican occultism stuff because yeah. I, I went into it myself a lot in researching and everything. And they're seeing things on the U.S. side now that are very reminiscent of some of the stuff we used to see here as far as not only the palo stuff, but how it's kind of melding, uh, kind of melding into some like other, other things. And yeah, yeah, they can't so, figure out what they see. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Well, you've you gone through all those deaths. Yeah. Right? Went through this whole giant journey. Um, like, uh, specifically, you know, what did it cost you? Like, what did you have to sacrifice throughout all that? And you know, what was, what was your, like, thinking, thinking back on it? Was it just time that you sacrificed for all, for all of that? 
nah, I think I like sacrificed my humanity. And uh, you know, it's funny because I was talking with my daughter yesterday, and we're talking about like her going to high school and all these things, right? And then I'm um, like, and I'm like, you gotta be on. I'm like telling you, you gotta be on your shit because se te pasa el tiempo. I go look at me. Look what happened with me. My, I went on this, but you know what? So, so you 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 become like a warning, like you warning people, hey. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, siempre they're like, hey, you got anything you could tell the kids? Some positive shit, and I'm like, nah. What, what can I tell them? Yeah, time. You, time. Yeah, and I, I like what I, I always say is that like, like I can't. I, I'm no one to give them advice because I'm just like them. I came from the same place. They, the the only thing that I can offer them is um, understanding and comprehension. A uh, young kid want to talk to me, I could offer him understanding and comprehension because I understand it and I comprehend it, and maybe he could just talk to me. Yeah. And that's enough. And and I could, we could have this conversation. And I, I think a big part of it is that not, it's not about what you can tell them. It's all it's just being willing to listen to some yeah, of these kids. Yeah, that's it. That's that, all. That's look, all I can do is a, just a, listen. A lot of them just want to be listened to. Like I have all these. Oh, cool. Listen. You know, a lot yeah. of people want to fucking spout information. When someone uh, was just want to be listened to, you because know? I, I feel I feel like that, and then then I'm like I almost feel like I'm glamorizing and I'm a hero, and and, and I don't feel like a hero. Uh, I yeah, feel I'm, almost like a victim from my own life. You well, know? I, like I'm like I like to tell people that I'm a cautionary tale. Like every now and then somebody goes through a bunch of horrible shit and looks back and says, "Oh shit, don't step on that." watch out for that thing over yeah, there yeah that thing hurts don't do this and this is pretty bad and i survived it somehow you know but don't do, don't be me basically it's something i tell people yeah. a lot <sighs> and that's that's what i was basically telling my daughter like don't be me don't be me but i, I and at the end at the end of the day i feel like i had to go through what i went through to become me this guy yeah because if not um I would have been that guy. And that guy was going to die anyways. <laughs> that guy was dead. Like, the hecho, cuando I went on the run, there was three attempts on my life in one month before mm -hmm. I went on the run, which was crazy. You know, I was like, they were back to back, and then I had that car accident where I flipped over and I heard like Everything was trying to kill you. Everything yeah, was so, trying to kill you. So I was like, um... I don't know. I, I think about these things all the time. I think about it like I went through all this and and, and, it, and, and I catch myself because I just se me olvida. Se me olvida de que they gave me a, somebody, the gods gave me a second chance at life. It's a per there's, I, a, there's a reason. You know? There's a reason. So it's like, I don't know. I, sometimes I think, what if I never would have got caught that day? I still would have been a fugitive. Yeah. How horrible that shit was well, too I much think, already i think it's a lesson there where sometimes we are avoiding something you know nobody gets away with anything is something that i've learned like over the years and people say they get they get they get they, they, they get they got away with something but realistically eventually either through you or your kids but that shit's gonna catch up nobody gets away with shit uh and a big part of uh a lot of people's processes is avoidance that's where they get stuck, you know? You fucking avoid it. You dock it. You hide from it. Bury your hand in the fucking ground. But eventually, it catches up to all of us, right? And, you know, it did to me, like, probably a year ago when I stopped drinking and shit like that. You know, I was avoiding shit for years, you know? That was my poison, you know? But now that that, that shit is kind of like, it, like, I remember we're stopping drinking and everything's clear now. Like, it turned from a... Polaroid picture to a full HD film as far as all the shit that I went through, you know, <laughs> talking to you about some of the shit you went through. It's like, oh, I wasn't the only fucking idiot fucking doing crazy shit in this world. You know, he went through it. And also the fact that you got a second, not even a second, maybe a third or fourth chance. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You're like, holy shit. Like, there's other people like me out there that get completely fucked over by the world and then somehow dust themselves off and uh, make something out of it, you know? Uh, I always have this thing where I'm like constantly figuring out how to make myself worthy of the chances that I've gotten after, you know. And I think that's that's basically what both of us are kind of kind of doing right now. Um, when I was on the run, there was this kid that was on the run, right? Mm -hmm. He his dad was from my neighborhood. I didn't I didn't know him, but vinieron y nos lo trajeron. This fool's wanted. Can you guys look out for him? 
Yeah. Y, y, y su mamá era, um, era peruana. No, no, el papá era peruano. And she was, she, as a matter of fact, she's from TJ, the mom. But she knew how to cook comida peruana. So nos traía. Y la lady, she was like, like a clairvoyant. Like, she, era como bruja, you know? Yeah. And then, um, un día se me queda mirando. Y la said, they almost had you one day. Right? And I was like, what are, you, what are you talking about? She's like, they almost had you. They almost had you like three different times. And then I'm like, maybe. And then, um, y, y me pregunta, y, pero, what do you want? I'm like, I just want to make it. I don't, I don't know to what, but I just want to make it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm then, into and, this. Yeah, and then she's like, you are. Yeah. Pero en esos días, pues, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not nothing. sure of I'm shit. I'm looking at it like, like. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you're here now. Uh, you have uh, a lot of things you've done. Uh, a lot of people you've inspired with some of your music. Uh, you have a daughter, which is great, you know. And, uh, hey, man, we made it somehow. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody asked me to ask you before we end this, who Mr. X is. What's up with that? It was in a picture. Mr. X was a bar right there in my neighborhood where everybody would hang out at. Mr. X. Mr. X. And it's crazy because that's like a residential street. And mm. there was a bar in the middle of a residential that's street, like some TJ shit. <laughs> <laughs> y este, y ahí pues, most of the people that hung out in there, like, like los paisanos, yeah. either were from Jalisco, Colima, and Oaxaca. Because that whole area, everybody's from Oaxaca, either, or Colima, or Jalisco. Yeah. And my uncles would hang out in there, and, and we would hang out in there, and everybody would sell dope out of there, and, and, um... Was that where it started? The, like, yeah, no, <laughs> was no. This, was, was it like a central starting point for you, basically? Yeah, it was, because when I, I remember being like, 10 11 years old and there was an alley that connected like three streets so it would start on 25th the alley will go to 24th 23rd and then it'll stop on 22nd so when we were kids we would hide in the alley and wait for like borra borrachos drunks to come, to come take a leak and we had these fake um they look like fake nine millimeters they were lighters <laughs> as a matter of fact <laughs> but it looked real had weight on it and we were just like these kids it looked like the movie the city of gods those little kids <laughs> And we just grab this fool and just pfft. You don't know if it's real or not. Also, it's a kid holding a gun. Yeah. So that's where you... And we would just like pocket him, you know, like pocket check, le quitamos todo and whoop his ass. Y nos fuimos corriendo a little Is kids. that place still open? Nah, the city had it closed down. It, it um, like the city fought. They would, they try to get a, like an ordinance against it and all, all these things against wow. it. And they, they fought it back and, and, it's it, it's been popping up on the screen people oh, yeah. have died right outside people have died inside like it's, that was the start yeah, yeah. so mr x mr x <laughs> i think that's a pretty good place to end it you know and the name is funny too and mr and it really no one called him mr x so I'm on mr x mr x <laughs> yeah that's why hey, I, 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 mr x way well, type we, shit fucking ending where we where we started you know uh, and now I think it's like a, I think it's like a Christian church. I'm like, what? Yeah. So like, well, the, they, <laughs> they cleansed it. And uh, well, they, they have a few years to work on to try and cleanse that place. Probably, you know, to get yeah. all those ghosts out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Conejo. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. This is the first, uh, one I'm doing of these and I couldn't, uh, imagine, uh, better, like a guest to have on, you know, somebody that, uh, we crossed paths for a bit and then we didn't and then we found each other again yeah so it's a it's a been a cool ride it's cool, been a cool ride cool, with you cool ride. uh carnal again from uh, del corazón gracias por venir no gracias a ti and uh whatever you need man i'm here cool thank you right.